message I'll be sharing with you and uh, we'll be discussing prayer as usual so that we can improve our prayer life and to get more insight on what we need to do when we pray but before we get started I just want to first read the scriptures and then have a word of prayer let's start off if you have your Bibles to 1st Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 we're going to share with uh, you tonight. So that's 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. <coughs> Excuse me. And it reads, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made to all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, and that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you put so much in your word in regards to prayer. And even as we are at a Wednesday prayer message, and we will be praying over your prayer list, the prayer list, prayer needs of other saints, we pray that this word will help to improve our prayer methods and why we need to improve and also what effects it will have. So undertake for tonight, bless those who are listening and those that have to speak. Pray that you'll give me wisdom from on high, for it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Yes, we want to talk about intercession prayer. This is one of the, that's step number six in the twelve points of the hour of prayer. Part six is intercessory prayer. So when we think about intercessory prayer, this one particular scripture mentions that type of prayer. So in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, the list of elements of a prayer is listed. There are some items in prayer. One of them is intercession. If we look at the scripture, we see that we want to see how intercession and prayer for all men is applied. What is the application to that? Now, if we read uh, verse 1, it says, I exhort therefore that first of all, and he's putting a, a list. The first part of that list is supplications. What does that mean? That means the action of asking or begging some something earnestly with humility as one can fall down on his knees in supplication really seeking the lord's uh involvement in that prayer a supplication and prayer then the sixth thing he said second thing he said was prayer this prayer means talking to god when we are sincere who are we begging and talking to? We're talking to God, not to people, not to statues, not to individuals, not to groups. We're not invoking something that's just out there. We need to know who we are talking to and praying to. Now, prayer means we're going to talk to God. Now, you know, believe it or not, in this world, a lot of people pray, but they don't pray to God. They pray to ancestors. They pray to other beings. They pray to other entities. They may pray to a cow, a bug, an insect, or some other uh, individual that's supposed to have lived on the earth but has died in the meantime. But they are praying to that individual to uh, meet their needs. But we're talking about prayers means talking to God. That is prayer. 
And I have, this isn't in the list, but one of the other things it talks about is giving of thanks. As we are praying, first of all, these, these three, in, uh, well, there's four things, but the third one, I'm going to uh, make a list of it. It isn't the third one listed, but the third thing we're going to talk about because we're going to get into the third. But the fourth thing is giving of thanks. We, we want to give thanks as we pray. That means expressing gratitude, giving praise and gratitude. You know, as we pray, we need to really be grateful. This is one of the things that establishes a point of interest in our prayers. Are we grateful? Do we have gratitude or do we have resentment? And always complaining and not having uh, a, a attitude that expresses gratefulness to what God has done. Yes, things could be bad, but are we grateful still for what God has done? Being thankful. Sometimes people, all they can, can focus in on are the negatives about anything that goes on and anything positive that happens, they just blur over it very quickly. We shouldn't be like that. We should have a thankful heart to the Lord. Number one, we can thank Him even though things are going bad People could be sick. We could be feeling bad. Things are going bad financially and all around. The, 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 the things that are falling apart politically in the nations and the, and the violence and things. But we can be grateful that God is still in control. And who He is who he is. So coming to prayer with that attitude, that was the fourth thing. Now the third thing we want to look at in this list is intercession intercession and he says intercessions that means plural several things we need to step in for intercession what does intercession mean it means the action of saying or praying on behalf of another that's the prayer of intercession praying for someone on behalf of another sometimes it's asking the lord the lord let me step in and, and, and take the brunt for whatever someone else is going through. You know, we're going to look at some examples when we talk about this. There are three types of examples. We can pray for a nation. We can pray for it, groups of people, even our own people, our own family. But then we can pray for individuals. We're going to see examples of each. Of course, there are more examples than these. But we want to look at just the three examples so that we can understand how important intercession is when we pray. Now, the first example I want to look at is in Exodus chapter 32, verses 32 and 33. That's Exodus 32, verses 32 and 33. This is dealing with Moses praying for the nation of Israel. How did he pray and what happened as a result? We see that in verse 32 of Genesis 32, Yet now if thou would forgive their sins. See, the sins of the nation of Israel were so bad that the Lord wanted to just wipe them out. But not Moses stood up and made intercession and interceded for the sins and the lack of appreciation, the things they weren't doing toward the Lord, how they had almost left him and started making calves and, and worshiping other gods and, and just forgetting about what the Lord had done. Well, he was saying, forgive their sin. Sometimes we have to pray for the, the forgiveness of sins of others. Others that have sinned us, sinned against us, first, many times we want to not forgive them, but we need to pray for their forgiveness. Pray for that nation. And if not, Blot me. Now, this is really interceding. He didn't just pray the Lord would forgive them. He said, look, if you're going to do something, do it to me. Now, that's some serious intercession. Sometimes, and I remember interceding, uh, uh, especially for my uh, son when he was very sick. Now, I, I remember going to the Lord and I said, Lord, if something someone has to be sick or hurt or go through this difficult time, let it be me. Let me go through it, not them. And uh, that's making intercession. And I pray thee out of thy book 
He says, I pray thee out of that book which thou hast written. He said, can blot me, blot me is to erase me out of the book that he knows the Lord has written a book. Isn't that something? I'm ready to stand in their place and not lose my salvation so that this per these people can be saved. He said, blot me out. But, I mean, he knows he had a list of people who would be saved, who would go into glory with him. That were his. He said, well, blot me out. Just please, not these people. Y'all, we ever felt that way? That's serious intercession. Verse 33 says, but what was the Lord's response to that? That's in verse 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. In other words, the Lord said, I hear what you're saying, Moses, but I don't do like that. I don't let you take the place. There will be someone who will take our place. And he'll take it, and it will be the payment for sins when we accept him, that our names can be written into the land book of life. But if, when it comes to blotting somebody else out and you can take their place, I don't deal. I don't do that. Whatever they send, that's the one that's going to be blotted out. Now, I hear what you're saying, and and the Lord uh, honored what He was saying. He understood. He had that heart to intercede, to pray for someone else, and even to stand in their place. That's truly intercession. But the Lord says we need to give intercessory prayer sometimes. The Lord won't honor what he can't do. And he said, I can't let you take the blame for everything they have done. Same thing with our sins. We're made righteous in God because of what Christ has done. He has already paid. So when we're interceding, we're, we're interceding with Christ. We can't um, negotiate salvation for another person by saying, take mine. The Lord said, look, if you got it and you accepted me, you're taken care of. It's up to that person to take care of theirs. Now, I, I can convict them, show them the way, but it's still their choice. Can't take that away, but we can still say, Lord, convict them, go to, to that person, speak to their heart, and make a change in their life. Now, that's for a whole nation. That's for a whole, like we pray for our nation. He prayed for the nation, but our nation is very, very sick with sin. That's the bottom line. But we can still pray for their salvation. We often do that. We pray for our family situation and salvation. The loss, we pray for them because they have sinned. Our families, but we're talking about the whole nation. He prayed for. Now, the second example we want to look at is what about people, groups, when we pray for other groups? Uh, uh, not just individuals, but groups. We're talking about a whole nation. What about if we want to pray for a group of, 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 of uh, individuals, people groups, things of that nature? Well, we get into Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 18. That's Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 18. Here we see Hezekiah is praying for the people that have sinned against the Lord. He's making intercession for them, praying for, for the people because they had fallen short in some place and, and, uh, and being prepared and giving their hearts to the Lord. Verse 18 reads, For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim, and Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun had not cleansed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. In other words, they didn't do things right. They didn't prepare for the Passover. They didn't prepare the heart to do what was necessary to do the Passover. Now, when we think about Passover, we know that initially the Passover was when the Lord told the children of Israel, he says, the death angel will come, but he will pass over you. But you have to do things. You have to put, uh, first of all, slay a lamb, uh, unblemished lamb. The blood will be placed over your doorpost. 
top and on the side posts of your door. And the death angel, when it comes by, will protect that house so that the firstborn of that house will not be killed. So when it came to preparing for the Passover, they had things that they had to do to prepare their hearts and self. Just like if they didn't put the put that uh, blood over the lamp over the doorpost on the sides, you can say, "Well, man, I forgot." That's a terrible thing to forget, especially at that time. That meant the death angel would come through, and the firstborn in the household would have been dead. And you can't just say, "Oops, I forgot." This is something we have to make sure we are prepared for what the Lord wants. Now, but sometimes people don't do it. We say, "Man, you're, you're missing it." Instead of saying, oh, man, that's that's your bad, he's praying for them and said, look, Lord, please let them go through it. They're observing this thing, but please interceding for these people groups, Ephraim, Manasseh, Iskar, and Zebulun were people groups of the 12 tribes. They didn't prepare, but they still wanted to eat the Passover because they, they were supposed to not only put the blood up, but eat the lamb. Now, they, went, they ate the lamb as a written. But Hezekiah prayed for them because they didn't do all the preparation. He prayed for them saying, the good Lord pardon everyone. Please, Lord, pardon them for what they neglected to do. Interceding for people groups and other groups. Sometimes we have to intercede for people uh, churches like the Lord had uh, prayed and, and prayed over the churches uh, that in Revelations. <clears throat> we pray for other groups of people that are falling short. We have to do that. That's why we pray for true salvation for some people. Lord, if, we don't know if they're saved, but Lord, please forgive them, convict them, and work on their behalf. The blessings that you have given us because we love you, please Consider them in your blessings. That's what we have to do. And that's an example from Hezekiah. Now, the third one and the last one I want to cover is what about individuals? Yes, there are examples of individuals being prayed for. And we know of one in numbers. Numbers chapter 12, verse 13 through 15. That's Numbers chapter 12, verses 13 through 15. Here we see an example of Moses praying for an individual. Matter of fact, you could say it's a family individual. Sometimes we, can, we have to pray for individuals in our family that have sinned, have done something in no they should be punished for. We have to pray for the Lord's grace on their behalf. Moses stood in the gap and he is interceding for his sister, Marion. Let me read the scriptures in verses 13 through 15. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Hear her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received in again. Verse 15 reads, And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. Now, Miriam, of course, did mention Aaron, her brother, had sinned against the Lord because they wanted to complain and stand um, in the path and the decisions of Moses because he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they're going to take over charge and, and complain and stand before him in convicting him of a sin like he wasn't qualified. In other words, dealing with God's chosen as if we can take their place, undermining his decision, what God had blessed. Well, the Lord says, you're going to have leprosy, a terrible disease at that time especially. And he said, and when she turned white 
with leprosy. And you yeah, got the thing now, this is his sister. We, he knows, yeah, she said some ugly things and, and tried to get some stuff started. This is family and all of that. But he said, please, Lord. He stood in the gap and said, now, please, Lord. She did this thing, but heal her. I could see the suffering that she had. I know where this is going, but Lord, heal her. Heal her for her insolence and the things that she has done and said and tried to do. It could be a lot of situations when people come against you or offend you or offend the things of God, especially when it comes to family members again. It can be a hurtful thing. And Moses just begged. He said, Lord, I'm interceding for her. Please heal her now, O God. I beseech thee with earnestness. This is a, suppl a supplication prayer. I beseech thee. I beg you, please heal her. And what the Lord's response was is, listen, you know the rules. And now, if her father had spit in her face, and that was a, a rule, you messed up so bad that the father would spit. Now, I was looking at one example that a, a daughter-in-law or, or someone could spit in the face of an individual for not fulfilling the vows of the family, for, for taking care of her or being married to the next son in line. There are times when to spit in that person's at that person that was an insult and it would have been justified. And God is saying, you know, if her father had spit on it, she would take her seven days of, of 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 being ostracized for what she had done and have shame for seven days. This is what God said. What she said and did, man, that yeah, I could heal, but she, that's no punishment. She still has to be punished, even on the basic rules. So let her be shut out from the camp seven days. She still, it's like quarantine. You get the COVID now, but you got to go through quarantine. She had to go through quarantine. Put her out of, of everything. Let her be, be shut down from everything because of this. You know, this is serious business when you go against God's man. When you try to undermine his authority, and that happens all the time. And you wonder why some things happen to, to individuals. Well, we still need to intercede for them when that happens, when these things are said. So, yes, she spent seven days, but things didn't move until she came back. And verse 15 says, Then Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days. And the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. That can slow the operation up, you know. But we need to intercede. We still need to pray for those situations. For the nations, for the people, the groups. We need to pray for those who are falling short of what they should be doing. And then individuals we need to pray for. When I look at in, in that kind of thing, I, I see things being said, yes, even in my own family and, and people that you know could be in your family, you know persons that need prayer for, they need to be interceded for. And it's important. Why? He said do it for all men. We can see the example, all men and all nations, all people, groups, individuals. And he says, going back to 1 Timothy chapter 2, he said, give... Uh, have supplications, have prayers, have intercessions given to all men, be made for all men. Now, verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority. There are people in authority we need to intercede for. We need to intercede for the authority that we have. When we, we see our presidents, our senators, we see our local um, legislators, people that, that uh, judge, officers, and police and those of authority those who have uh when we think about working for the governmental authority and those who sit behind the desk and and in the various fields people sometimes have bad attitudes going through problems have needs making decisions for one another that we, when we go out and and deal with those in the civic area of our, our lives and around us he says, pray for them in this way. Stand in the gap for them. Okay? Now, 
The last part is very important because when we look at this, we see what effects it has. Not only on them, but it has an effect on us as prayers. All right? And it says <clears throat> that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life. A quiet and peaceable life and all godliness and honesty. This is the result. We ever wonder why we murmuring and disputing and having a bad attitude, feeling bad. You don't even hear about what goes on in the news. Maybe because we're not praying as we should. Because it will give us a peace on the inside. Yes, things are, are, are disturbing going all around. But when we pray in this way, make an intercession for these bad decisions and the ugliness of men one toward another. And we're praying for the, their forgiveness and, and the Lord given. That gives us a peace on the inside. We just don't run around and keep talking about what they're doing and man, that was so bad and uh, makes me so angry and all this stuff, being angry and full of hate and uh, other things that other people are doing. When we pray in this word, it gives us peace and, it, and uh, a life that we can have in godliness, a godly position and an influence on our own behalf for our own persona and our own way of dealing we can be honest yes it hurt me but I sure am, am going to stand in the gap for you and pray pray for the needs because they need help they're pitiful everyone we're so busy pointing the finger at people but we fail to realize that God always say listen there's spiritual wickedness in high places all over that are over them. They're giving these people these attitudes. They're giving these people these thoughts and decisions. Their spiritual wickedness deriving the hearts and thoughts of men. So they're starting to do stuff. And you know, man, why are you doing this? Why are you doing it? Why do you think this? Why are you thinking this way? They need prayer. We won't be mad at them because we know what's in play. Spiritual wickedness. That's why. He says, pray for all of those in authority, kings, rulers, magistrates, all of those. Because it's only the grace of God can deal with it. It will give us peace. We've done the most effective thing. Sometimes he says, nothing I can do. Oh, yes, there is. We can truly pray and go before God who definitely has the power to do it. He says, well, I can't call the White House and I can't call the Senate. I can't call the governor. And I can't call this one and that one and, and, and the Turner General and get them to do it. Yes, but you can call God. Who's greater? We know God is greater. Yes, we can do things that others can't do. We can do things that those who have the ability and, and have the connection with these individuals, they still can't do it. But we can sure get God to do it. Powerful in prayer. And Satan doesn't want us to know it. Think about that. He wants to think that our efforts are fruitless. We won't accomplish anything, but they will. If it does nothing else, it will definitely give us peace of mind. So when we're praying for these individuals, we can say, yeah, it's not on the news. It's, no one is going to give us a reward and come to our house and say, oh, man, you prayed for, for this individual, and we're going to give you... Uh, this gift. Don't worry about that. God says, I got you on that. Just do it. And he will reward us. Not that we need a reward, but we sure can do a powerful prayer. Isn't that a blessing? Our prayer can do some serious thing that can change the world. And Satan doesn't want us to know it. Satan wants to think that we are helpless, useless, powerless, not that we need power in ourselves, but we sure can can go to the one that's got the, the maximum power. That's the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of God to follow through God, the Holy Spirit. And there's no greater power than all of that. And so we can be thankful. So, with that in mind, we're going to close there. Remember, intercede. It does something. It does what God says it will do. If you believe him, faith as a mustard seed can remove 
mountains. It sure can change the hearts of men and women. And as I'm endeavoring to make that more of a practice, I pray that you'll do the same. So that's it for tonight. So let's bow our heads in prayer. And if your head is bowed, you may be saying, I want to intercede and I want to deal with others, but you know the Lord has to deal with me first. I need to accept him as Lord and Savior. And with your head bowed and eyes closed, just pray this prayer. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. And I want Jesus to come into my heart and my life to be my Lord and Savior from sin. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me and born me into your family and help me to live this life from this day forth by your power and your might. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, get in contact with us. Send us a letter to our post office box. Or if you know a member of the ALBM, and you want to get with them and, and let them know the decision you made. They'll definitely be able to, to, to uh, lead you to Christ and tell you what you need to do next. And for those of us who know the Lord, we know we need to intercede. We need to make this practice, this message to encourage us. And we thank the Lord for what he's going to do. So until the next time, I want you to say to all of us listening, remember what Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, part B. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly.